Hello Pisces lovers and welcome back to the 18 plus immaterial garden. This is the red light special monthly sexual energies bonus reading for the month of April. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. The first three cards that we pull, they are going to involve what is the overall top influencers for your lover, your persons, or the person that you have your eye on or your mind on. What is the top three influencers on them, on their sexual, erotic, and romantic energies, especially for the month of April, please? All right. Here we have... <laughs> the sleep card. So it looks like you might be dealing with someone who is incredibly tired. You also could be dealing with someone who maybe feels like they're sleeping on you, maybe feels like they are not necessarily that enthusiastic about the sexual connection, the sexual relationship. For some of them, it may be that you make plans with them and it looks like they miss the they miss the date or they miss the plans for some of you i do get the energy of no call no show so i don't know what's going on with this person for some of you it's it, it might be situation one though where you already have something established with this person maybe they've just been very lazy in bed as of late as well okay let's go ahead and take a look here uh let's pull additional energies we do have quality time. So I feel like what you're really looking for in this situation, you want this person to give you attention. You want this person to give you affection. But it feels like maybe over the course of your relationship, maybe at the beginning, maybe they were really enthusiastic. It feels like now it's almost like they can't be bothered is sort of the energy. Or it feels like they've just gotten very lazy in the situation, very complacent is what I'm getting, okay? Let's go ahead and see what else do we have here. We have BFF. So this person, it kind of feels like at this point, maybe you feel more like you are just friends with your lover at this point. I feel like, I don't know if they've necessarily felt very sexual or they've if they've really initiated sex with you. I feel like, um, I feel like you maybe feel like they're, they only think about you as a friend at this point or they're trying to they're trying to disconnect from the sexual attraction or the sexual relationship at this point, okay? But it feels like they still want the friendship. They still want to be a part of your life. I feel like it's possible that they may they may just not have the time, energy, or the desire to have a relationship right now. For some of you, it looks like they're just too... It's like they can't be bothered to give as much as you need in the relationship, so they'd rather just be friends, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, tell me about the sleep card. We do have Saturday morning cartoons. I, yeah, I kind of feel like this person, they just want to have a good time. It's like they love the time that they spend with you. They want to joke around. They want to be like BFFs. But when it comes to the sex, for whatever reason, this person, they're just not, they're not really into sex in general. Because maybe this person has a really low libido is kind of what I'm getting. So it's not necessarily something you should take as a personal offense. But you may, because Pisces, I think that the people you've been, been involved with previously, I feel like they had more like high sex drive high libido I feel like the person that you have your mind on your eye on or that you're currently with I feel like they don't have that strong libido so sometimes it does make you wonder like don't you want me sort of energy okay but I don't feel like they're trying to just make you their friends I think that that is your impression of the situation I feel like it's because this person does not really want sex very often okay uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's take a look at quality time. We have take a number. So here it kind of looks like maybe... Maybe you feel like... Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you just can't accept the fact that this person doesn't have a very high sex drive. So it's making you very suspicious. This person, if they have a best friend that they could possibly have a sexual connection with. I feel like you're imagining things or that you are imagining that they have this sexual aspect to their relationship that it doesn't actually feel like it's there to me. Now, of course, you have to use your own instincts, intuition, intellect, and the facts at hand together to get the most accurate read of the situation. But for me, this looks like you might be accusing this person of having sex with your with their best friend or having sex with your best friend. But the truth is, 
this person, they're not that into sex. They're just not that sexual is what I get, okay? Maybe that's also, maybe the reason you're trying to, you would rather it be them cheating on you than them not having a very high sex drive is because for you, I don't think you're gonna be satisfied in the situation because you actually have a, a pretty big appetite for sex, all right? Erotic connection, sexual intimacy, that sort of thing, it's very important to you. So I feel like you're tr you're almost trying to create you're trying to create a more complex situation because it would be easier for you to accept this person is cheating on you and to forgive them so to speak than it would be to deal with the fact that even if this is a good relationship in every other aspect because the sex is not satisfying you're kind of over it okay Maybe you feel guilty about that, all right? Maybe that's that's what the issue is here. You're feeling guilty, but instead of directly dealing with the guilt that you might not be attracted to this person anymore, you might be trying to, you know, making the situation even more complicated than it really is, okay? Uh, of course, again, if you are, if your instincts, your intuition, your intellect, and the facts at hand are telling you that this is a thing, that is valid. Even if you just have a hunch, that is valid. But if even if it's one way or another, even if you can't verify, if you're so convinced that this person is a cheater, then it's kind of like, that's on you for continuing to put yourself in that situation, okay? Because you, you are, in this case, it's not fair that someone would put you in that position, but if you find yourself in that position, you have to decide, are you going to allow them to continue to string you along? Or are you going to, you know, end the relationship so you can get into a better situation and find someone who is better suited for you? Let's take a look at um, BFF. We have not the first rodeo. So it looks like, first of all, this person, they've been friends with this other person with their BFF for a really long time. I actually feel like you're not the first partner or lover to accuse this person of having an affair with them. I feel like this person, they may even accidentally laugh when you're confronting. I feel like you confront them, Pisces, and I feel like they actually, they accidentally laugh because they're like, this is not the first time this has happened, okay? Now, maybe these people, maybe the, your lover and their BFF, maybe they need to just come to terms with the fact that for some reason, everyone freaking thinks that they're lovers, okay? If that's not the case, maybe they should figure out what is it about them? What is it about that relationship, okay? Maybe it's showing some sort of pattern or suggesting some sort of pattern or some sort of behavior that neither of them is really seeing or understanding, okay? That being said, it could also just be that this is a continuous problem for your lover, the fact that they are not that sexually motivated, and it I think it tends to freak their partners out. That's what I'm kind of getting from the situation. I feel like also um, this BFF, maybe they, in this case, I feel like they might give you some very valuable advice. I would say Maybe even if you do confront this person saying like, are you sleeping with, with my, my person? You know, I feel like even if they say no, they might be able to give you some insight. That being said, I, you know, I, maybe it is gonna get packed back to your person though. So maybe before you confront the BFF, maybe it's a better idea to talk to your person, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. Tell me what's the, uh, what's the takeaway here? What's the takeaway here for our Piscean friends in the situation? We have mature and stable. We also have great in bed. Okay, so I I feel like you have to I feel like you have to be mature and mature and honest with yourself in the situation because I feel like Pisces what you're telling me is you love a lot of things about being with this person, but you also want someone who sexually satisfies you, someone who is not just proficient in bed, but someone who is great in bed. Whether you want to admit it to yourself or not, this is a criteria that you're judging potential long-term partners on. You may need to ask yourself, does being great in bed, does that really contribute to the commitment? Does that really contribute to the long-term sense of commitment? And if it does, that's awesome. Live live with that, okay? You know, live that. But if it, if it doesn't and you think, okay, maybe I can make some compromises sexually, you know, uh, in this case, because I am happy, I am in love. But I don't know, you have to be careful there because anytime it just feels like something's not quite right, you don't want to just squash that. I mean, it is mature to see if there's a way that you can adapt, but you shouldn't adapt so, you shouldn't need to adapt so much that you feel like you're, you're sacrificing something.
Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, let's pull one more for you. We do have we do have Highlander vibe. There can only be one. And in this case, I feel like you are looking for your soulmate. You're looking for your counterpart, your twin, your perfect match. And in this case, you have to be real with yourself to either say, I need to let go of that vibe, that Highlander vibe. There can only be one, only one person for me. And it's this perfect idealized version of someone that I haven't met yet. And I want to keep looking for that. Or you have to say, dang, my standards are too freaking high. And maybe I need to figure out what I can, what I can comfortably compromise on. Okay. Uh, without feeling like I'm punishing myself or or sacrificing so much that I'm just miserable in the situation, okay? All right, let's go ahead and move forward here. We're gonna move into the relationship between the your overall energies, sexual, erotic, and romantic or for the month of April and also for your person. We'll also pull your shared energy and elaborate a little bit on that, okay? So let's go ahead and see for the month of April, what are your overall sexual, erotic, romantic energies? All right, and for your person, what are theirs for the month of April? We'll also pull a last card just to see what is your shared energies for this upcoming month. Oops, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, let me push this here. All right, so let's go ahead and start with your energy and then we'll get into your person and then we'll get into the shared. All right, so what do we have for you? We do have the call box energy. So with the call box, I do feel like, maybe you feel like there's a need for communication with your person, with your lover, with your partner. I feel like here, maybe you've been keeping it on the inside because a, a call box, it's like you're asking for permission to come up. So either your person has been very closed off about this or you've been very closed off. I feel like in this case, Pisces, you've been the one who's been kind of secretive about these feelings that you're processing. I think that you are, you're ready to like talk about it. I feel like you're having trouble initiating the conversation, but it does look like maybe your partner is going to initiate the conversation. Maybe they see that something's up. Also here, it could be you visiting someone. So maybe this is like you confronting the BFF or uh, going and uh, maybe it is like you're you're visiting someone, but I feel like if you're visiting someone, it's not your lover. So I feel like you're having trouble initiating the conversation. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. Tell me uh, about your person's energy for this month. We have the freaking telephone. So I feel like they're the ones who are gonna call you or call you on it or call you out is what I'm getting. I feel like they're going to, they're gonna ask, will you tell me what's on your mind? And I feel like as soon as they ask, you can't help but to communicate what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you're sensing, okay? Here we have the little um, fortune kitty. So it kind of looks like here, they're gonna take it well. They're gonna take your feedback well. I feel like you might be fearing that there's gonna be some very dramatic or very like some confrontation. I don't think that that's the way it's going to be. I feel like this person, they're like, they're a lot more mellow than the other people you've been involved with. But I feel like to some degree, it also is a little infuriating because they're so mellow that it's almost like, you're like, do you even care? <laughs> okay. Maybe they're just always like, they always seem like much more cheerful, optimistic or chipper or something like that. Maybe for, maybe it starts making you feel like somehow like there's something, there must be something wrong with you because you're not happy in the situation. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. Tell me about the shared energy. That being said, we do have the bridge energy here. So it looks like with communication, and this is all about communication, you could be dealing with a Gemini possibly, but if you are both willing to open up to communicate, and I feel like your person really is, I feel like you've been the one holding back, but you can, you can meet halfway. You can bridge the differences between you if you want to salvage the relationship, all right? But if you're truly not happy, don't keep trying to make it fit. Don't compromise just for the sake of having the connection, all right? Let's go ahead and take a look here. Tell me more about the callbacks for you. Yeah, we have, this is like a bridge. It's also like a pier. It's also blue skies. So I feel like if you've been feeling kind of um, under the weather, like in a mood, having a spell, I think it's because you've been holding this in. I feel like you're going to let it all off your chest. And I feel like it's going to feel, you, you, you feel lighter 
sharing your thoughts, sharing your feelings, all right? This is something very positive, even though for whatever reason you have a lot of anxiety going in, I feel like um, it's good. it has a positive outcome one way or another, whether that means that you are going to work it out with this person or whether it means you have to step away from the relationship, all right? One way or another, I feel like you can end this very maturely and it's it's not it, it's not going to be drama. It doesn't have to be drama, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. Tell me about your person with the phone. We do have the the coat rack or the, the wardrobe. Yeah, I feel like basically you're just going to s figure out what's what. I feel like your person is going to set the record straight. I feel like they are going to explain a lot of maybe things that they feel like, oh, you know, like they're, that they feel like have been issues between the two of you. I feel like they're unpacking. I feel like they are letting it all come out. They are showing you, you know, they're walking you through their thought process is what I'm getting here. And I feel like, um, I feel like you're also, because this person is being so forthcoming, because they are being so honest with you, so transparent, I feel like that inspires you. Anything that you've been kind of keeping to yourself or you've been unsure about sharing, I feel like you open up. And I feel like because you're both being very honest about the situation, about your feelings, about your desires, I feel like altogether you are able to come to a point of agreement or you are able to get on the same page. I feel like even if the relationship is not gonna continue in the form that it is now, I feel like it's still going to endure. It's still going to be sustained, all right? Let's go ahead and take a look here for the, this bridge. What is the um, clarification? We have the pressure point, okay, or the pressure plate. So here it looks like, yeah, it's like, it's like, pressure release valve. I feel like especially if you've been giving each other the silent treatment or if you've exchanged some harsh words, I really feel like, I feel like it's more like the silent treatment because I feel like the problem is it's like no one is talking up about how they're feeling or what they're thinking about or or anything like that. I feel like the, the other person in the situation, possibly a Gemini, they seem much more apt to like talk about things, but maybe they've been holding back because they're afraid that they don't want to pressure you. They don't want to, um, I don't know, I feel like here with this, this is also, you know, right before you enter a crosswalk, you'll see this this pressure plate. So it could also be, you know, approaching cautiously, but ultimately here, I feel like the, the, the conversation is constructive. I feel like it helps to relieve some of the pressure, some of the tension. I feel like for most of you, this, this is going to allow you to uh, turn a new leaf, turn a new leaf or turn the page in the relationship, all right? All right, let's go ahead and see what is the um, takeaway here. We have one headlight. We can drive it home on one headlight is what I get. We also have the umbrella energy. So I feel like here there is a way for both of you to, you know, come to a point, a sense of illumination, illuminate to the other person what it is that you want from the situation. Understanding our relationship is not perfect, but we can drive it home on one headlight and it can be more than enough light for us, okay? We can be under the same umbrella. I feel like also here there have been some umbrella assumptions, some assumptions that that maybe both of you have been working off of where it's like you have to see beyond the assumptions because the assumptions are like driving down a d dark road and having something highlighted but not necessarily getting a clear look at it. So don't jump to conclusions. There needs to be more conversation. There needs to be more communication before you really get a handle on how to either salvage this thing or how to, how to um, you know, minimize damages, minimize uh, minimize damages if, if it needs to end, okay? All right, uh, let's go ahead and move into the, oh, uh, let's pull, actually, let's pull one more. Overall, uh, let me go ahead and shuffle this one more time. Tell me one more overall takeaway. We do have the rowboat energy. So yeah, I feel like if you choose to work together, you can find synergy in the situation, but it is gonna take talking. And I feel like especially on your part, it's going to take being courageous on your part to be able to open up maybe about some thoughts, feelings, or insecurities that you're not necessarily always, you're not very comfortable talking about, okay? All right, let's go ahead and move forward. So in the third part of the reading, we're going to move into the sexual confessions. So out of all of the three sections, this is probably the section that has the most um, 
potential to hit differently or to resonate with a different group of people. But it can also be a continuation of the energies we were picking up on in the first two portions of the reading, okay? Just make sure, you know, take what resonates, don't force anything, and be open to the story even if it's not yours, okay? You might still learn something from it. All right, so let's go ahead and explore the sexual confessions of your person, Pisces. What is it that your person desires? What do they lust for? What do they crave? What are they dreaming about? What are they afraid of? All right. I was going to say, let's get deep into your person, but that's your job, not ours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Sexual confessions from Pisces person, please. All right. Let's go ahead and see here. We have parenthood without union or marriage. So for some of you, your person, they could be a, they could be a child, uh, they could have had a single parent household when they were growing up is what I'm getting. For some of you, this could be someone that you have a child with, but it looks like they don't want marriage anytime soon. Okay, so take it as it resonates there. Let's go ahead and see here, we do have privacy restricted access. You feel like it looks like your person, it looks like they're very private. They. It looks like they are not sharing their emotions with you. They're not sharing their desires. Or they feel like you are not sharing or you are presenting some sort of uh, boundary or some sort of wall between you and them, okay? For some of you, they could be very secretive about their their parent, or they could be very secretive about their family. For some of you, maybe something that they're not telling you, they may actually have a child with someone, but it looks like they're not connected romantically, energetically. They don't they don't love this other person is what I'm getting. They just have a child with them, but they might not have shared that information with you yet, just yet, okay? I do feel like for a few of you, this person, if they have children with you or they're about to have a child with you, they might actually be having, they might be investigating you and I, I they might be Googling you, they might be like, they might be looking at some of your records because maybe they just wanna know who they're having a child with. I don't know if this person's a little paranoid, take this as it resonates, all right? Let's go ahead and move forward. We do have touch you though. So it looks like this person, they love to put their hands all over your body. I feel like this is someone who they, they love to physically touch you. So if you're together, they, they're usually like touching your arm, touching your leg. Maybe they like to stroke your hair. Maybe they like to touch your, your face. Or for some of them, maybe they like to rest their hand like right over your heart is what I'm getting. I feel like this person, the, the way that they touch you, there's so much gentleness. There's so much... Pat, uh, not so much passion, but there's so much affection the way that they touch you that it's like, I don't know, it, it makes you feel good. There's something about, oh, there's a siren in the background. It it, it makes you feel good. It, it feels like, it feels like being cared for, even if this person sometimes may not be the most vocally affectionate, or if that makes sense, all right? Let's go ahead and take a look here. We have fast and rough. Yeah, to be honest, though, I feel like when when this person, when they're touching you very sensually or very non-sexually, it's very loving. I feel like when it comes to sex, though, this person probably is a bit more on the rough side. I feel like this person, they might, I, I, I don't want to say they have sex like a porn star, but they kind of have sex like a porn star, or they might just be more into the, um, they might really be into penetration. They might be really into intercourse. Uh, whatever it is, it's like, they do have a sort of like, um, primal sort of energy to them. I feel like this person, they, I feel like, yeah, I feel like they don't make love. I feel like they, they fuck. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look here. We have cuddling though. That being said, it's like, it's almost like this person, like when they're in the, <laughs> when you're having sex with this person, they become a beast. Okay. They become a demon, a beast, a succubus, or all right, an incubus, a succubus. But out of bed, they're actually quite loving and affectionate. I feel like you, you kind of love this blend though, because it's almost like, I. Uh, it's almost like the best of both worlds. I feel like in the past, maybe you've had partners that were, um, they might've been physically affectionate, but it's like the sex really wasn't, <laughs> it feels like the sex maybe was really boring, okay? For others, I feel like, I feel like the sex was amazing. It was like that dirty, nasty, like um, primal sex that I feel like you really enjoy. 
Pisces, but I also feel like those people might have been not very affectionate physically or might not have been very gentle with you physically. I feel like this person has the perfect blend. I feel like th I feel like a lot of this is just your physical attraction to this person. A lot of this is also you're you're almost like you're almost addicted to their touch, but I also feel like you don't trust them, all right? So it's kind of, it's a little difficult because I feel like this could be a very, this could be very sweet energy. This could be very romantic if it wasn't for the fact that there's this weird distrust that, I mean, maybe it's not just you, maybe it's both of you, you know, that you share this weird distrust of one another for whatever reason, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. What else do we have? We have hand over mouth consensual. So it looks like this person, they actually like when they, uh, I feel like either when they fuck you or when you fuck them fast and rough, they like to put, you know, someone likes to gag the other person to put their hand over their mouth. Um, I feel like both of you enjoy this together. I feel like, uh, you know, I kind of feel like you like a little bit of a, you like a little, you like a little tang on your sex, okay? You like a little, a little nasty, a little filth, okay, is what I'm getting here, which makes absolute sense because you are the moon energy, and the moon is not just about, you know, romance and making love. The moon is also about, you know, primal desire and instincts, all right? I also feel like for some of you, I... Uh, Maybe, I feel like for some of you, you could have like some sort of like rough sexual role play with this person as well, all right? Let's go ahead and take a look here. We do have performance anxiety. So maybe someone here, I feel like with performance anxiety though, I don't feel like it has to do with sex. I feel like it has to do with um, something to do with what this person is trying to keep private. Maybe they're afraid if you find out that they have a child or if they if you find out that they, maybe that they're not involved with their child. Maybe they feel like you're gonna judge them. Could also be that it is possible they have a child with someone else who is very, it's a very meddling energy. They might be trying to pr pr protect you because they don't want you to see that they were ever with this person that seems very, Maybe this, maybe they know that the person that they had this child with, you're not going to get along with this person. Maybe they think that you're going to judge them or see them as a lesser person because you have, they've been wrapped up in the past with this, with this ex, okay? Uh, even if they don't have a child with this other person, there is someone from their past. It could be their, they could be their parent, perhaps. They don't want you to meet this person because they feel like it's going to change your image of them, all right? We also have your love or sex lifts me higher. So that being said, I do feel like it's not just about sex for this person. This person definitely has feelings involved. Now, it's kind of weird because they're a little compartmentalized. So again, it's like they might they might love you to death. They might feel like you're the, their soulmate, but when it comes to in the bedroom, they will they they will treat you like, you know, um they will treat you like their personal sex toy or sex slave if that's what you will if that's what you want from them okay all right um they also want it but only if you want it is kind of the energy that i get all right or maybe this is they're willing to be you know your sexual your, your sexual um play thing uh, as long as they know that you love them as long as they know that there's something more as long as you treat them kindly i feel like the only real barrier here feels like whatever this thing is that they're trying to keep private or keep from you we do have slow, deep, and hard, so I feel like you both, you know, maybe sometimes, one way or another, I feel like both of you are really into intercourse. I feel like both of you are really into penetration is what I'm getting, okay? Whether that's with your anatomy or that's with toys, I feel like both of you, it's like both of you are not just satisfied with touching. Both of you want penetration. Both of you want to, I don't know, I feel like you like skin to skin. I feel like you like it raw also, okay? All right, we have single parents. So I do feel like someone, they either were, you know, they were raised by a single parent. If they were raised by a single parent, it feels like they might, they might not have gotten along with their parents and they may be embarrassed for you to meet their parents, okay? Or maybe they just don't want you to know that they came from a single parent household. This person might've even told you that they have 
that both their, that they have both their parents but maybe they don't all right single parent maybe this person is a single parent maybe they have a child uh, you know if you've just recently met this person maybe they do have a child maybe they are the the guardian of that child but maybe they're very protective who they invite to meet their child perhaps all right one way or another this this concept or this energy of single parenthood is affecting them whether it is because that's how they were raised or who they were raised by or they actually have a child in their life that they are for whatever reason keeping from you all right let's go ahead and take a look here we'll look into uh let's pull another round of messages all right we do have All right, afraid to ask for what I want. So maybe here, maybe for some of you, what they're, the secret that they're keeping is they don't want you to know that they have a particular kink or they want you to do a particular thing. Maybe they're afraid that you're going to <laughs> laugh at them or mock them or it's going to make you question their, you know, it's going to make you question their sexuality perhaps, all right? Maybe they've had bad experiences sharing this with, with lovers in the past. All right, maybe also they're afraid that somehow if, if you know that they have a child, it's gonna change the sexual compatibility or, or chemistry or relationship between the two of you. Let's take a look at privacy and performance anxiety. We have fingers in mouth here. I feel like this is less a, sorry, I didn't mean to clarify, let's just, just ask more. Yeah, I feel like though there is something, there's a pattern here where either you or this person loves to gag the other person with fingers, with, um, toys with gags with panties or boxers with uh you know putting the hand over the mouth but i feel like someone someone really just like that's their thing that's what really turns them on all right or what at least one of the things that really turns them on maybe for some of you maybe what your what your lover is saying maybe they want to like maybe they do want to like um be a little more aggressive with it though maybe they want to like i feel like they kind of want to like put their fingers in your mouth they want to like maybe put them down your throat and maybe like um have you like just spit all all spit up all over yourself i feel like they want to make you really messy really just like sloppy i just feel like this person wants to make things sloppy and messy is what i'm getting here i also feel like it's a sign of like maybe it excites them because it's like you're letting them I feel like it's like a lot of penetration so you're letting them penetrate your mouth with their fingers or something like that they find that exciting or you just really love being penetrated so it's like it, I just feel like whatever it is it's it's something that both of you really enjoy together uh but I feel like they, they maybe they want to take it maybe they want to get dirtier with it or get nastier with it maybe they're just not sure how to ask <laughs> okay maybe it, like they've been putting their hand over your mouth maybe what they want to say is i really want to choke you like gag you like you know what i mean with my fingers or i want to make you spitty and, and messy and you know maybe they're just embarrassed by that maybe they're gonna think oh gosh you know pisces is gonna think i'm a freaking pervert or something <laughs> all right um let's take a look at let's take a look at what's the next message for you we do have sexual dependency though. I do feel like here though, some of, you have to be careful Pisces because I feel like this is for you. I feel like in the past you have had sort of relationships that are completely dependent on the sexual relationship, on the, um, on the sex, on the fucking. So I feel like here you do have to be careful because as much as there's potential here for these, and there are these deeper feelings, don't get so, don't get so hyper focused and wrapped up in the sex that you end up neglecting cultivating the the actual intimate or emotional or romantic relationship with your person okay because there's affection here and you know it feels like um oops sorry i, I just like dropped a bunch of cards there's affection here it feels like it feels like this could develop into something deeper, but there's also, uh, there could be a, a danger of getting hung up and focusing way too much on the sex. All right, tell me about, and, and that could be, maybe it's like, maybe this person, let's say like this is connected to part number two of the reading. Let's say that this person, they don't usually have a high sex drive, like they don't want sex all the time, but when they want it, they want it 
<laughs> they want it uh, filthy, nasty, deep, hard, you know, rough, that sort of thing. And maybe it kind of confuses you, maybe because they seem so sexual when they're having sex with you that when they when they don't want sex or when they're not thinking about sex, it really throws you off. Maybe that's part of the reason why you're so convinced that if they're not having sex with you, they must be having sex with someone, okay? Tell me about, um, tell me more about the situation. We have eye contact during, so yeah, I also feel like you and your person, you have this very, this very, um, focused, very like, like steamy, very like, almost like, like <laughs> intense eye contact, especially when either of you are orgasming is what I'm getting here. I feel like this person, they like demand that you look them in the eyes when you're having an orgasm, you know, uh, because it's almost like they're like that, that orgasm, you know, um, that belongs to me. Okay, it's kind of the energy that I get. Like, it, this is, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna gift you this pleasure, but who does that orgasm belong to? It, it belongs to me, is what I'm getting, all right? Ooh, I feel like you really like that. I feel like when this person, I feel like if this person was just like this more of the time, I feel like you wouldn't have any issues, but I feel like it's confusing because again, they can run very hot and cold. I don't feel like it's because of a lack of interest in you at any time. I feel like this person, they have varying degrees of interest in sex in general, okay? So I'm gonna take a look at our last message. We do have multiple partners here. So Maybe that's what someone is afraid to ask for. Maybe someone wants to, maybe someone wants to be exclusive. I don't know if it's you who wants to be exclusive or it's they, them who want to be exclusive. Um, but I feel like that's someone, someone is feeling some anxiety. They're not sharing that they, that they maybe are tired of shopping around or dating around. With multiple partners though, I feel like that's more connected to maybe an anxiety that someone has that maybe someone, again, it's just this energy where if they're not interested in sex, they must be getting it somewhere, but that's not necessarily the case, all right? So I feel like this links into the desire, maybe the desire to want to be exclusive, but someone not sharing that, it's making them feel paranoid that you know, that there are other people. I think the best remedy, the quickest, easiest, best remedy to the situation is to just directly ask your person, or maybe they're just going to, you know, directly ask them if they're the one, you know, if you suspect that they, they want to be exclusive, ask them, do you want to be exclusive? Is that what you want, Pisces? If that is, then great. If it's not, then you need to have a conversation. Or it's just going to be easier to tell them, I want to be exclusive, what do you think about that, okay? I feel like sometimes in many cases though, when we are afraid to ask, it's not so much that we're anxious of the action of asking, in many cases we're anxious about getting the answer. In many cases it's we're afraid we're gonna get an answer that we don't want to hear, and instead of, you know, sometimes not prolonging the question is a way of prolonging holding on to a situation or to a lover, even when we know that, <laughs> that you know, we wouldn't have these feelings if everything was just right as rain, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. We will, let's pull a couple more cards here. We have touch it. So it looks like here, um, <laughs> it looks like this person, maybe they like, they like to watch you play with them is what I'm getting. Maybe they like to watch you touch it or they'll be like, do you want to touch it? You know, um, I don't know. I just kind of feel like they, they live watching you stimulate them is what I'm getting. Also, they love knowing how much you want, how much you want to, to touch them, but especially how much you want to touch their sex. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and take a look here. We also have dirty talk. So yeah, they love it when you, when, you touch it when you're when they're watching when you're talking dirty you're like when you're talking about ooh i love the way it feels like it's so it's so hard it's so soft it's so wet it's so firm <laughs> whatever it is like it's um they just love when you're describing how it feels you let when you're describing i love the way when you're when your eyes roll back like that i love when you bite your lip i love when you know i love seeing you whimper i love hearing you whimper and moan you know you're just you're just describing and it's just like i feel like this person it just it drives them crazy 
I feel like they love your voice as well. They find your voice very sexy. And I feel like, um, I don't know, I feel like they, they love it when you're explicit, all right? They don't want you to, they don't want you to be shy or coy. They don't want you to use innuendo. They want you to be as nasty as you want to be and to, they want you to use really nasty language with them. I feel like maybe in, it's possible, Pisces, if you're someone who's a little more demure or a little more shy in public or a little more less sexual in public, in private, they want you to be like their dirty mouth, you know, their dirty mouth lover, their you know, they're, um, woo, <laughs> um, yeah, they're filthy lover is what I'm getting here. I also feel like this person, they may, they may love when you talk about their sex. They love when you describe their sex. They love when you, um, when you, uh, when you're looking at their sex is kind of what I'm getting. This person sometimes, depending, you know, on if how it resonates, this person sometimes may purposely like not, uh, they might not wear panties for instance, and they might like to spread their legs whenever they have the opportunity so that you can see that they're not wearing panties, even if there are other people around, they might do this discreetly. This person may also do something like wear, um, wear, uh, like wear gym shorts or um, wear, what are those things called? I'm, I can't believe, sweatpants, okay? They might like to wear sweatpants partly because, you know, it's hard to ignore that they're not wearing any boxers underneath and they got it going on in those pants, okay? <laughs> That's kind of what I'm getting here. They like, they like your, um, they like when your eyes are on, are on their sex, okay? All right, let's go ahead and pull, what is the, Let's pull one more and then we'll pull a takeaway takeaway for you. We do have sexting. This person really does love when you send them pictures is what I'm getting. They love when you are, um, they also love when you send them little, uh, uh, maybe this person, they like you to count your orgasms. So maybe whenever you have an orgasm, they want you to text message them and tell them, you know, it can be discreet depending on who's going to see your phone, but you just send them the number of how many times you, you made yourself come that day or something like that. Maybe they also want to, you know, show your work, <laughs> show your work, Pisces. <laughs> Let's pull one more message. We do have insecure though. So I do feel like someone is insecure about multiple partners or someone is insecure that they're not the only one that this person is having fun with, texting with, sexting with or something like that. Uh, I also feel like with insecure, I feel like if there's insecurity, it could also be because you sense that despite how much fun you're having, the attraction, how there can be a deeper feelings, deeper connection here, you just keep getting the sense that they're hiding something from you. So that could be maybe, you know, uh, you have to figure out why is there this nagging feeling? Do you need to be more trusting of your person or your partner, your lover? Or is it that there really is something up, you know? Is it, you know, try to do whatever it takes to evaluate the difference between insecurity and intuition. That's what I'm getting here. That's a focus for you, okay, for the month of April. We also have, um, let's go ahead and shuffle. What is the takeaway? What's the takeaway for you here? We have hurt pride. I do feel like here though, I don't know why I want to mention it, but I will say if you are questioning this person's integrity, I feel like it's really going to hurt their feelings. I feel like it could really hurt the situation. I, I feel like you have to be careful how you, how you, um, navigate here okay or how you move forward now if you have evidence if you have something where you're like this is undeniable then i'm not saying that you shouldn't confront this person if that's what you feel like is the right thing to do or what is you know what is necessary in the situation but i will say if you're wrong this person they're not gonna they're gonna hold it against you they're not gonna be able to get over it okay this person for whatever reason they really they take their privacy very seriously and it again it might not this could be I'm gonna say this could probably be a Scorpio energy or they could have Scorpio strongly placed in their chart but privacy and privacy and integrity are two things that are very important to them okay so if you if you don't want to hurt the relationship you know if you're if you're if your um, tactic is to just go in and wildly accuse them to see if, if they bite, to see if, like, you know, you get a reaction, it's kind of like, you know, you're imagining it, like, in the show where they're like, you know, um, when did you steal the necklace? Oh, last night. How did you know? I didn't until just now. You just told me, you know? That's not going to happen with this person, okay? <clears throat> that That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. What is the last takeaway guidance here? 
we do have ghosting so it is possible that it is possible that if you if you do that this person will end up probably just very quietly going away probably not going to argue with you just very quietly going away if you don't want that to happen and you're the one with insecurities you need to talk about it with this person if they're the ones and you sense they have insecurities or you sense that they're hiding something from you you have to talk to this person one way or another the, the solution to all this answer is to talk to each other we also have saving face but just be careful this person they do have a lot of pride and they will they will break off the relationship or they will leave in order to save face okay all right thank you so much friends please join me again gratitude to the divine to you and all of creation